Reflow's Ocean Statistical Spectrum Engine is capable of adding additional surface details to hybrid simulations. The basic process of creating these structures has been introduced in the previous video tutorial, but with one limitation. Everything has been simulated without splashes. In the following lesson, we will create a scene with splashes of different size, ranging from small to big. To achieve this, we have to introduce a source of turbulence. This can be, for example, moving ships and boats, falling rocks, marine animals like jumping sharks or dolphins, or, as in this case, concrete blocks from collapsing pillars. Let's say these pillars are inside an inner harbor and are being blown up to make room for something new. Before we start with the fluid simulation, the rigid body part is adjusted. The columns have been modeled in a 3D program, imported to reflow, and fractured with a Voronoi by steering geometry tool. A built-in sphere object has been placed somewhere inside each column to define the area with the highest density of fragments. Then, different seats and object numbers were applied to achieve a random look. When a node is fragmented, Reflow creates a multibody containing the pieces, but also keeps the original object. If you do not need it anymore, it can be removed. Multibodies do not provide direct access to the individual elements, and the object is treated as a single node. But the body consists of several fragments, as you can see in Reflow's wireframe mode. You can also take a look at the physical properties of each node inside the multibody with a summary info panel from the file menu. After the columns have been fragmented, they are turned into active rigid bodies, because they should move and interact with the surrounding ocean. In order to simulate an explosion effect, the pieces have to be highly accelerated. Another requirement is that this process has to be controllable. Right now, the columns would simply start to break apart with the very first frame. To avoid this behavior, the pieces have to be linked again, but this connection has to be released when the columns are detonating. Reflow's multi-joints can be used to link different objects. The force panel gives you the possibility of defining when the pieces should be released. With break if distance exceeded, you have an easy to use method of controlling the breaking process. To simulate the actual explosion effect, an attractor daemon will be used, with a bounded option set to yes. The character of an explosion is that it creates very high forces within a very short period of time, like a strong impulse. This behavior can be reproduced easily with an animation curve. Simply create animation keys within a range of three frames. In order to destroy the connections between the fragments and accelerate them, very high forces are needed. And here we do not need an attraction, but a repulsion. Therefore, a negative value is used.
to stop the flying pieces, a passive rigid body container is created around the scene and collision site is set to inside. Its size is 25 by 20 meters. It takes a few test simulations to find the working settings for the multi-body's mass, which is controlled with a density value, the multi-joint's forces and the demon's strength. Density is 2500 to prevent the pieces from flying away too far and to create enough interaction with the fluid. The explosion is not very strong because we want to show the interaction between the objects and the fluid and create a lot of splashes. With fragments escaping from the scene, this goal would be difficult to reach. If the bodies are too fast, they can be decelerated with an exclusive drag force demon. In the next step, the hybrid elements are configured. Our basic setup consists of a domain and an emitter with a link object to define the fluid's volume. Water depth is 1.75 meters. The already existing cube top open node is used to enclose a fluid. Global cell size is 0.1 and the domain's creation mode is dense. The interaction between the fluid and the fragments plays a key role here because we want to create a decent amount of turbulence and splashes. This can only be achieved with a sufficient number of particles. The high emitter gives you the possibility of adjusting this number individually for the fluid surface and core. Here, the surface's particle sampling is set to 3 to create a total amount of 27 particles per cell. The thickness of the surface is 0.2. Another important adjustment concerns a column's surface offset parameter. To make sure that the fluid touches the surface of the objects, the collision area can be visualized with a display volume feature. The red band defines a collision area and you can see that the fluid does not touch the object surface with the current settings. When you simulate now, you will see an offset around the objects. With a negative surface offset, the field can be shrunk. Please bear in mind that this parameter depends on the current cell size. With a cell size of 0.1, only integer multiples of this value will be considered, for example 0.3 or minus 0.2. To get a proper collision, minus 0.1 is used here. With this value, you might see a few particles inside the objects, but you do not have to worry about them. They will not influence the quality of the simulation or the final render. The displacement can be simulated together with a fluid. In the video tutorial covering this feature, we have presented a workflow to preview the surface structure using RealWave. The same technique can be applied here. Create a new scene with a rewave node, decrease polygon size to get enough details, 
and at the OSS Deformer with a right click. Both waste surface and domain must also share the same dimensions. Now you can start to play with the parameters, create a preview and transfer the values to the domain. The only value that has to be adjusted is vertical scale. Set Calculate Displacement to Always and open the Simulation Options panel. Although we can expect some very fast moving fragments, it is worth trying to simulate with a max substeps value of 1. To speed up the simulation, activate Command Line and hit Simulate. If the strength of the splashes is too weak, or if there is not enough turbulence, please increase the multibody's interaction factor. In this scene, the value is 6. Turbulence has been improved with the domain's vorticity boost parameter. 0.75 should be enough. One thing that could be problematic is when the attracted demons are below the waterline. This could result in huge splashes. To avoid this, make the demons exclusive to the columns in the relationship editor by reconnecting the nodes. Of course, it requires a few tests to get the desired results with adequate splashes and object velocities, but the final simulation could look like this. Here, you can see a turbulent water surface with lots of splashes and even individual drops. The interaction between fluid and objects is strong enough, and the look matches the setup's dimensions. Now, at a hybrid or mesh node. As you have learned in the previous video tutorial about Reflow's ocean statistical spectrum, the domain's viewport icon acts like a clipping plane. Everything below and outside the plane will be cut away. This way, the amount of polygons can be drastically reduced, but only when the mesh node's open boundaries option is enabled. It is always a good idea to start with the standard settings to see what you finally get and where you have to make changes. In many cases, the default values create satisfying results. Splash attenuation 
can be deactivated because it is not relevant in most cases and might add an unwanted noise pattern with high values. Please change its values carefully and start with low settings around 0.2. This feature removes the displacement pattern in splashy areas. A very effective way of improving the mesh is weight normalization. With this feature, the mesh will match the underlying particle cloud better. As you can see, the smaller elements are now smoother and the splashes are more pronounced. When polygon size and particle radius are the same, the meshing process is very fast. The parameters have exactly the same meaning as the counterparts of the particle mesh. With smaller polygon size, you will be able to include more details. This also results in finer drops and meshes. The particle's radius is responsible for the fluid's thickness. With small values, the fluid might look torn and you will get more drops. Polygon size, by the way, should never be greater than particle radius. Let's take a look at the remaining parameters. There are separate filters for the splashes and the core fluid. Each particle carries a value between 0 and 1. With 1, it has full splash or core fluid properties. The differentiation between these particle types is done by reflow automatically. With a splash threshold of 0.4, for example, the filter will only be applied to particles with an appropriate internal splash value of 0.4 or higher. Particles with smaller values will not be considered. With a splash thinning filter, you are able to get a higher level of detail in splashy areas and thinner splashes. With a very high thinning size, the splashes ends might look like spikes because the polygons are pushed closely to the particles. For that reason, you should be careful with values close to 1 because in this case you might see polygon intersections. The core smoothing filter helps to create smooth transitions between the fluid's core areas. The threshold parameter defines which particles will be taken into account and with smoothing steps you can determine the strengths of the filter. Please bear in mind that this parameter only affects the core areas of the fluid, not the splashes. The hybrid or mesh's default values are thoroughly chosen and in many cases you will achieve very good results with these standard settings. If you are not satisfied, you should change the values carefully and in small steps because they are very sensitive. Polygon size and radius also have a huge impact on mesh creation time and the file size. Once you have found working settings, go back to the first frame and build the meshes for the entire simulation. To do this, select the mesh node and click on the Build Meshes button. This part can also be completed via the command line. Simply open the Command Line Options panel and check the Mesh option, then hit Simulate. Finally, create a preview with Reflow's OpenGL or Maxwell option or import the mesh data to your 3D application. The clip shows that the displacement structures have not been applied to the splashes. There is a smooth transition between the surface waves and the thinner parts of the mesh. To create more details and finer structures, the number of particles has to be increased. The final quality of the mesh depends on exactly this number.